Welcome back to The Breakfast here on PLOS TV Africa. Our next conversation is uh, moving all the way to Ogun State. Uh, the Red Cross Society, um, a couple of uh, days ago, put out a, a report uh, saying that there's um, dozens or hundreds of residents of Ogun State that are fleeing to Benin Republic to escape the crisis and um, you know, the insecurity challenges that, uh, um, of course, they have been dealing with there for a while. The Ogun State government, of course, um, had its own clarification and uh, said, of course, otherwise that, uh, you know, those reports were false. Uh, we are speaking this morning with um, Honorable Remy Hazan, Special Ad Advisor uh, to the Ogun State Governor on Media and Public Communications. Good morning, Mr. Hazan. Good morning. Good morning and thanks for having me. Thanks for your time. Uh, let's uh, quickly get into it. Um, of course, you're representing the government this morning, so I, I, I want you to quickly clarify on the um, report by the Red Cross Society. Uh, the Ogun State government thinks uh, completely otherwise or says completely otherwise. So could quickly share with us what exactly is going on in that community. Thank you very much, and thanks once again for having me. Now, in the border areas of Ogun State, uh, there is a kind of uh, uh, ethnic identity that transcends our border. In other words, you have some group of uh, people who also have their kinsmen across the border, so to say, uh, and they have a way of cross, you know, crossing the border and having one thing or the other to do, whether here or on the other side of the divide, depending on the convenience at any point in time. So whenever we say someone has the status of a refugee, the question is, according to the United Nations standard, are they really unwilling or unable to return to their home? I don't think any of this is their case. Besides, even the nation of, uh, of which they are alleged to have uh, sought refugee has not even in any way gotten across to us to say they're holding any of our citizens refuge. So the fact that these people have reasons to have their kinsmen across the border and for wanting of a, a certain flash uh, point of crisis and they've decided to uh, stay put with their kinsmen or uh, maybe they are even part of those who are on that side of the divide. Uh, it shouldn't be taken as anybody seeking refuge in a foreign land. Some of those who are even here are actually those who are from that side of uh, the sub-region. And so they cross the border at convenience. The K2 uh, ethnic nationality is found both in Nigeria and also in that part of uh, uh, the West African sub-region. So they have the way of affiliating with their kinsmen across the border. So, so let, me, let, me, let me clarify what you're saying. You're, you're, what you've described now is that there is a border that Nigerian citizens and those of Benin Republic freely walk across, um, you know, because, well, they're sure, kinsmen. Sure, because of the Ecuador Treaty. Um, okay, and, and so, you know, does that in any way already create a security situation? Uh, that should be checked in Ogun State? Of course, it surely creates a security situation. Besides, you should know uh, that the issue of uh, border control and border patrol uh, is something that falls under the exclusive list. We can only collaborate with the agency of government that is into that. That's the Nigerian Immigration Service. But the truth of the matter is that the ECOWAS Treaty uh, allows these people to freely move and because they share the same ethnic identity with some of our people here, it makes it a lot easier. And they have intermarried, they are into each other. And when they come in here, uh, it's like them coming home to some of their kinsmen. And if our own people too go there, it's like reuniting with their kinsmen, so to say. So to that extent, we cannot in any way categorize those who choose to go back to the other side of the divide as refugees. Okay, so I, I want to get you on record, Mr. Hassan. Are you saying there is no refugee crisis among the Ewa people in Ogun State? And that there as is no... As far as we are concerned as a government, we are not aware of anyone of our citizen from this state seeking refuge in the Republic of 
Benin. We're not aware of any. M Mr. Hassan, th the word you use here is that you're not aware, not that it's actually not happening. And I wanted to take you up on that, especially there, when you there, said... There is, there is a process by which you seek refuge in a foreign land. And when that is done, even our own uh, consulates there will have that information. And na the Nigerian embassy in the Republic of Benin has not in any way contacted the Home Office to okay. say that any of our citizens has sought refuge in that place. So okay. if anybody is there claiming to be a refugee, that person needs to take it up one more step so that we can be aware here. And if that person is truly seeking refuge, whatever may be the reason from the home front that has made such a person to move, we can now begin to address it from this end. We're not aware of it. Mr. Hassan, you say that the government of Benin Republic has not communicated anything to you and you're not aware. But it's Nigerians that are in question here, Ogun residents that are in question here. Has the Ogun state government sent a team to find out? Has there been any investigation done by the Ogun state government to clarify or verify if indeed these are people of Ondo state that are seeking refuge in Benin Republic? Now, you said Ondo, we are talking about Ogun, oh, not Ogun. I beg your here. pardon. I'm now, Ogun. the way it is, the way it is done, when you get into a foreign land and you are seeking refuge, you go to the authorities of that nation that has to do with immigration to declare that you are unwilling or unable to return to your country of origin. And at that point in time, the embassy representing the country of origin you have come from will be notified that such and such a person is coming in seeking refuge. Nothing of such has happened. Besides, the areas where there are flashpoints of uh, crises that has to do with some bit of insurgency or insurrection, we are already addressing them and we are working hand in glove with those who are the leaders of those communities just to bring peace back to all those areas. And to that extent, that is the much we can do as a government because what you are talking about crosses the border. It is beyond what a state government can address. Okay. Um, Mr. Hazan, um, the, the situation here is that there's a, there's a statement from the Red Cross and I'm really happy you're here because the statement they've put out suggests that people in Ogun State are living in very unfavorable conditions. And you, you, you explained that if you want to seek refuge, you have to go to the... Can you, can you, say, can you say that again? Let me, let me, let me be very okay. clear as to what you said. Okay. Can you hear me, Mr. Hazan? I can hear you. Okay. I just want to be sure you said people are living in which condition? The Red Cross issued a statement, the Red Cross. This is a statement from Oluwole Aboyade. He's the Ogun State Red Cross Committee Chairman. And he says, quote, those who return to Benin Republic are citizens of Nigeria. They are Egons and Ohoris. Apologies if I didn't pronounce that right. He said, they are in Nigeria to lease farmlands. Some come to the communities during the day, but because of the crisis, they sleep in Republic during the night. So I'm trying to say that in a situation where people fear for their life, they're not going to another country, a neighboring country, to apply for asylum or anything. They are running there to seek refuge. And like, that's what I'm trying to, to, to put in front of you now. I, I mentioned earlier to you that what makes somebody a refugee is the fact that he is unwilling or unable to return to his country of origin. And that is not the case in uh, Ogun State because the areas where there are flashpoints, uh, they've been nipped in the board and peace is gradually returning to those communities. And of course, we are in contact with the community leaders and the traditional rulers concerning peace and tranquility in such communities. Now, these people, the Aguns and the worries that you mentioned, they also exist in that part of the sub-region. In other words, as they exist in Nigeria, you can also find them in uh, Benin Republic. So if anybody has crossed the border to be with any of his kinsmen there, I don't think that is uh, tantamount to uh, a refugee concern in the dimension that it is being painted. For us as a government, we are ensuring that peace, which is what the governor, uh, Prince Dabwabiyadun, has been preaching, is what we work towards. Because 
look at all the approach of our own uh, this farmers' headers crisis. It has been pointing in the direction of peace because that is the only one that is sustainable. If right. you try to do any uh, shortcut approach, you may not get the sustainable peace that all of us are looking for. All right. Because Mr. as a nation, Azan. we have gone too much deep into each other. All right. Mr. Azan, it seems uh, the, the challenge uh, you're having here is uh, the, the term refugees and calling them refugees. Uh, but you, of course, accept that they you know, are crossing to and fro the border. Um, so I, I, I want you know, to go back make, to make, the... Make no mistake that some of them, too, most of them, if, if, if not some, uh, are actually people with dual nationality. So if someone has come into Nigeria to lease land, uh, to farm, and there is some bit of momentary crisis, and the person has returned home, how do you call such a returnee? A refugee. That's, that does not add up yeah. in any way. Yeah, For us as a state, we have not gotten security concern to the level where we begin now to say we have refugees. It has not gotten to that level. And we okay. take exception to that. Just, Even the rest just of the to uh, not conveniently convince anyone that it has reached that dimension. Yeah, um, but just also clarify, you know, if you remember, you know, when there was um, a migration, you know, discussions across the world in Germany, people running from Syria and, you know, all those places, not a lot of them went to the embassy to uh, apply, you know, to stay in those places. People were running. No, 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 because, no, 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 no. Um, the, the Syrian example, yes. especially as touching on the Aleppo crisis was a major war situation. Yes. We have not gotten no. to that level at all. Absolutely Corona not. clashes happen here and there. And when people have reasons to move from one location to another within the country, that cannot give a refugee concern in the dimension it is being painted. But I want, I want to go back to... We are nipping it in the bud. And we want peace at the end of the day so that everybody can return to Absolutely. life in normal. Absolutely. I w well, I want to go back to what you had said earlier, um, that you hadn't gotten word from Benin Republic or from the government there saying that there were Ogun State residents in their, in their, um, in their country. Um, you also, you know, didn't, of course, when Aneta Felix had asked, you know, you also, you know, somehow mentioned that you, you hadn't been there, but you had, you had not received any... Uh, correspondence from those areas to say that there were Ogun State residents uh, seeking refuge in those places. But the Red Cross, uh, the Ogun State Executive Branch Secretary of the Red Cross, so once again, Uluwale Aboyade, uh, said his team visited those troubled zones. Um, and so doesn't it sound a little off that the Ogun State government hasn't personally visited those troubled zones? And so how can we um, verify and, you know, take, you know, um, um, you know, seriously the words from the Ogun State government when they haven't actually visited to see those people um, and to know what exactly the Red Cross is talking about. Thank you very much. I don't know which place you're talking about now for us to visit. We have visited the trouble spot and we are doing the needful in terms of deploying all paraphernalia that will help these various security agencies to ensure that peace is maintained in those communities. If you are talking about visiting them outside of the country, you know that has to be with the federal government because when it has to be a transborder issue, definitely you get the federal government involved in that wise. And that's why I said, if we have refugees that are Nigerians in Benin Republic, the Benin Republic government will definitely get across to us. Our own... Uh, uh, embassy there will also be in the know of all of this. However, if the Red Cross is bringing out this statement uh, and saying that those are actually indigents of Ogun State who have crossed to the other side of the border to seek refuge, we want to know more details about it. And of course, as a government, we will not leave that to uh, being unattended to in any way. But of course, we have to do it with the federal government because it is something that crosses the border of the nation and it's not something a state government has control over. Okay, so there's a report, I, even though you, you, you insist that there's no refugee crisis, I'm seeing reports here even from newsmen who visited areas such, you know, areas in Ogun State. Uh, they, they sort of visited Ikpombe, they visited Ohungbe, they visited Asha, they visited some, vi these are villages in Yawa lands that they visited. And they said that people say that they have flooded 
camps in Benin Republic because of the headsmen clashes. I think let's we need to go back to the reason why this you know issue is happening. It's the headsmen clashes in Ogun State that is making people leave. And one situation here is the Red Cross mentioned that uh, uh, the Ogun State Peace Committee actually the Ogun State Peace Committee said this that they they wanted to settle the farmers' headers clashes and in doing so they ordered people to stay clear of the farms that they didn't tell people to stop going to the farms but they told them to stay clear of the farms it sounds like the same thing to me wouldn't you agree no get get, get some things right farm settlements sometimes are not as heavily populated as you think uh, some areas can be so vast in uh, acreage and uh, hectares in such a way that you may not have more than 20 30 people in such places and if there are uh, issues that bring security concerns and those who are uh, people who own stakes in farms in such areas have been told uh, to uh, give space so that some bit of security uh, uh, provisions will be made for them to have safety and peace in that place i don't think that is out of place but don't forget that i said earlier that majority of the ethnic nationalities that we have in Ogun state they also exist on the other side of the border and these people are so close to each other there are families in yewa land that also have relations on the other side of the border and the way they visit each other is such that with all form of ease aided by the ECOWAS treaty makes them so much of affinity to each other so if anyone has now found it convenient to move to the side that is relatively safe while security is being put in place. I don't think that gives any uh, semblance of what we will call a concerning security or refugee situation. I just want us to have that at the back of our mind that these people have the same ethnic identity and they are related, they relate with each other so well, they've intermarried, they are close to each other. There are those who do business on the other side of the border there are those who do business here, and they are all the same. So okay. if anyone has moved, that should not amount to a refugee alarm. How, how uh, often uh, does the Ogun State government uh, visit these places? How often does the Ogun State government get uh, feedback from these uh, crisis spots? Um, that's one. And then second, um, you mentioned earlier that, of course, it has a lot to do with border control, you know, and uh, that's, you know, not um, what is not the responsibility of the state government. Um, so I want your, your, you know, I want, you know, to know what exactly the um, uh, border control, you know, agencies, uh, customs uh, are doing and, of course, immigration are doing about security with regards, you know, those areas. You've mentioned the ECOWAS Treaty. Um, but it also, you know, from what you're describing, means that weapons and, you know, arms and ammunition can easily be transported between Benin Republic and Ogun states without any, you know, issues. The issue of uh, arms proliferation, I, I don't think I can competently speak on that. We know that uh, a, a larger portion of our border stretch are uh, largely unmanned. But if you go through the uh, manned borders, I don't think anybody can easily bring in any arms uh, the way you are trying to portray. But in the, the, the question as to how often do we uh, visit these uh, places that are troubled spots, that's the reason why the committee is put in place uh, to ensure that uh, all that has to be done in terms of information gathering, uh, ensuring that surveillance is done, ensuring that reconnaissance is regular, and all of that is put in place. And the committee has been up and doing, ensuring that daily reports get to the state government as to what they do. That's one of the reasons why you even see that uh, some of the people who still are in their locations have been visited with palliatives just so that survival can be guaranteed. Uh, it tells you that this government is up, uh, ensuring that we don't leave anything to chance anymore. And just a few days ago, we launched a border patrol, uh, sorry, a security, joint security patrol for those areas uh, in terms of making vehicles and other uh, security uh, equipment right. available to the security agent to pol police all these areas 
and okay. bring the peace that we're looking for. Okay, okay Mr. Hassan, Re really about that palliative issue, we have reports that, yes, the government tried to get palliatives across to the people, but they say they would not, they refused to take the palliative, saying they would rather, how did they put it, they would rather die in another country than suffer in their home. I mean, this is a statement that we have from the Isolu of Isolu land, Oba Akintunde Akinyemi. He said the residents have refused to go back because of the security threat, the fear for their lives, and that looking back in those border areas in Ogun State, it's a terrible situation. The places are deserted. They've deserted the houses, the schools. But anyway, we'll be getting uh, this monarch on, on our program, hopefully on Monday, uh, to shed more light on this issue. So thank you very much, Mr. Hazan, for your thoughts on this. I need to respond to the comment that you said the right. SLU made. All right, please go uh, ahead. It is not wrong for a, a traditional ruler to be passionate about his subject. And to that extent, uh, we won't join issues with uh, the KBAC. However, uh, the pattern of sharing palliative in local state is to route it through the various local governments who will in turn uh, recognize and identify those who need it. And at the end of the day, they get to those who are actually the target uh, people. And that's exactly what was done in this situation. So bringing up uh, the issue of rejection of palliative, I'm not aware of that. All right. Thank you very much, Mr. Hazan uh, from the Ogun State Government. Uh, we appreciate your time on The Breakfast. My pleasure as well. All right. Good morning to you. And, uh, of course, uh, we hope that the Ogun State Government, as uh, he has said, it continues to be on its feet to ensure that uh, uh, citizens are safe. Um, my my I'm focus not very, is... very, very, you know, sure about the you know, interrelationship that he tried to describe, you know, how they marry each other and their friends and their best friends. I don't, I don't really know about yes. that. You know, I, I, I feel that, yes, the government has been visiting these troubled zones, but I feel that if the reports we're getting are that Ogun State residents have, in, I even saw the reports, they've been registered as refugees in refugee camps in Benin Republic. I feel the government doesn't need to wait and sit for the Benin State, yes, for the Benin to, Republic to, to, to write to, to you. Yes. If you know that your citizens are in danger, I mean, the welfare and protection of your, your citizens should be priority, then you should reach out to them, go to, go to Benin Republic, visit those refugee camps, find out if these are residents of Ogun State, if these are Nigerians, and find out what you can do to solve the issue that's making them run away in the first place. Absolutely. Not chilling for the government government so the Benin Republic to reach out to you absolutely but anyway that's uh, that's where we draw yeah, the curtain we'll on take, this conversation uh, we'll take a short break when we come back we're going to Zamfara now and uh, we're speaking about a no-fly zone that has been declared by the president and of course uh, once again suspension of mining activities in Zamfara a repeat of an order that was initially given in 2019 we'll uh, talk about these things after this short break <laughs> 